What's up guys, Press Center Citizen Response. Going to the video coming to you guys today. The topic we're gonna to be covering today, some of the medical gear and training that you can have and use to potentially save a life. Some of you guys know I have a medical background. Uh, I've talked about this in previous videos and a lot of you guys know me in real life. Uh, but I am an ER nurse, so I have a little bit of medical experience. I don't know a ton. There's a lot more to learn. There's always more to learn. But I can tell you from what I've seen and based on my personal experience. So the first thing that really matters is mindset. It um, doesn't matter if you have all the gear in the world, if you have all the training in the world, if you aren't willing to use it. And I'm not saying you're obligated to, but frankly, if you have the skills, the tools, and the know-how, you're probably going to want to. So it's the first thing is putting yourself in that headspace of, if this situation happens, I am equipped and I am trained to handle it. And if this situation happens, uh, I'm going to leave that to the professionals. I'm not morally accountable uh, if I don't step in because I'm not educated enough and it's outside of my scope of practice, you could say. On the topic of mindset, uh, certain training classes will help you get in the right mindset because it will mentally prepare you for things that you wouldn't have been able to mentally prepare for otherwise. What am I talking about? Uh, I took a really good combat uh, medic class um, with Tactical Fitness Austin, John Wayne Taylor. If you know anything about him, that dude's treated more trauma victims in combat than probably anybody since the Civil War. Uh, and we went through a bunch of scenarios. Uh, we went through active shooter scenarios. We went through uh, like disaster scenarios. And it was really interesting combining some of the medical knowledge that I had uh, with the situation, but not taking into account some of the external factors that were influencing the decisions that I was making. So my first recommendation is getting some good training classes. Uh, you're gonna start off with basic CPR. Uh, I think a BLS class is gonna be the most useful thing that you can have because you're way more likely to come across somebody who's having a heart attack than you are somebody who's bleeding out and needs a tourniquet. Now that leads to number two. Um, getting a doing a stop the bleed class a lot of places put these on for totally free uh, free of charge um, at like your local centers or whatnot uh, but just do some research and figure out where you can find a local stop the bleed class what this is going to teach you to do it's going to teach you how to apply chest seals it's going to teach you how to use a tourniquet and how to do wound packing uh, which are all three important skills that you should know the kind of final evolution of classes that you should take would be a T triple C course or some kind of combat medic casualty care course. Uh, there's a bajillion of these around the country, depending on where you're living. I would do a little research on the instructor, see what their qualifications are to teach some of these things, uh, and then go take one of those classes, and it'll really open up your eyes to some of the crazy things that we can do, and a lot of the things that we won't be able to do outside of a hospital setting. All right, let's get to the gear. So the gear that I carry uh, facilitates my lifestyle. I want stuff that's low profile, very slim. I don't really wanna know it's there, but I wanna be able to always have it on my person. And it's also coming from the understanding that there's a very limited amount you can do in a outside of hospital setting for a lot of these medical emergencies. But for certain medical emergencies, it's like having a parachute. If you don't have it, nothing else is gonna suffice. First item is a tourniquet. This is the Snake Staff Systems ETQ. I will say it is very difficult to improvise a tourniquet, and if you can, you wanna avoid having to improvise a tourniquet at all cost. Uh, this tourniquet is tiny. It's actually just a little bit bigger. This is a P365X magazine, uh, just for size reference and it sits very well in the pocket. It's extremely white, lightweight, very easy to deploy. Um, as you can see here, I've got it wrapped in black rubber bands. I got a little pull tab. I can just pull that right off. I use my teeth if I don't have access to my other arm, like a caveman, um, but it's gonna fold out here. It's going to give you a full-size tourniquet um, that you can easily rapidly deploy. It's got a nice windlass with a clasp here. Sorry, that's a little dusty, you'll see that. Um, but the point is, this tourniquet is really small and light. I've tested it with a Doppler and it actually works. Um, I've talked about that in a previous video, uh, but I basically used a Doppler at work which checks the pulse, distal and distal extremities. Um, so I tightened the tourniquet down, or I checked for a pulse first, right? Made sure that the Doppler was working. I heard a good pulse. Uh, I tightened the tourniquet down and the pulse was gone with the Doppler. So I trust it. Um, I think it's a lot better than carrying a cat tourniquet, which I would will not carry on my body, it's too big, uh, or a soft T-wide. So if you're interested in one of those, um, I'll put the link in the description. The second piece of medical gear is the micro medical kit. Now I actually make and sell these, I've sold a lot of these because 
it's kind of hard finding a balance of finding a med kit that's small enough that you'll want to carry on your person, but big enough that it actually contains some of the useful contents um, that you can use to save a life. So I'm going to walk through all of the stuff that I have in here and explain why it's useful. This bag is actually a waterproof bag, uh, which is really useful. I've had this one in my pocket for well over a year uh, and you can see the shape it's still in. So well, I got two things that just came out right there. So I'll kind of walk you through the first things first. I put the gloves up top so you don't forget to put those on. Uh, you definitely want to put these gloves on if you're dealing with any, uh, you know, blood or any bodily fluids because you don't know what some people have in public. And if you're jumping in helping out a random person, um, you don't want to fall victim to getting some disease because they have it and you didn't put on gloves. Next item we have in here is uh, duct tape. I think duct tape is a super underrated medical tool. Um, specifically, the reason that I have duct tape in here is for one of two things. Uh, one is fashioning this bag. As you can see, it's perfectly big enough to cover a bullet hole. You can fashion this as an extra chest seal or using it to secure down uh, a piece of gauze that you're using as packing. Um, on the outside, uh, if you don't have any other tape, this is a good option. The next item we have is quick clot gauze. Now, I've actually used this one out in public. Um, I had a guy who hit his head pretty bad and was bleeding pretty profusely, threw on my gloves, used the quick clot, it worked super well, stopped the bleeding um, so that it wasn't just completely running down his face. Was that a life-threatening medical emergency? No, it wasn't. But not everything's gonna be a life-threatening medical emergency. Now, this kit is geared towards those life-threatening emergencies, but having this quick clot gauze uh, is a good option for if you get a laceration on like your arm or leg, it's not quite bad enough for a tourniquet, or you decide later it is bad enough for a tourniquet because this isn't enough, it just gives you options. Final piece of gear that we have in the micromedical kit is antiseptic wipe. This is for cleaning uh, any debris around the area where you're going to put a chest seal because it needs to be able to adhere properly. So we essentially have two chest seals. We got one here. This is a hyphen vent chest seal, um, and this is a normal bag, but it is waterproof and you can absolutely improvise this as a chest seal. Now how you're going to do that, um, you're going to place this one over the entry wound um, and it's going to have vents so it allows air to escape but not get back in. Now this one, like a little caveat, um, if you take one of those classes, they'll uh, teach you how to improvise a chest seal, uh, but you're going to put four sides of duct tape if you're having to move the person and let's say you're having to drag them uh, to safety because you don't want this to come off and then you can take one of those sides off. The reason you're gonna do that is it creates a one-way valve for air to escape and not get back in because you just fixed an open pneumothorax, you don't wanna give them attention tension pneumothorax. Um, there's not only so much I can cover in a little YouTube video, go get education on how to do it, but it's just tools that you have in your tool bolt now. The final piece of medical gear I carry is a knife. Um, a knife, super underrated piece of medical gear. Um, mine happens to have a seatbelt cutter on it, um, but, and a glass breaker, but that's not really medical gear, but in the context in which you might be using medical gear, it might be useful to have those two things. Now, the reason the knife specifically is an important piece of medical gear is you can't assess the patient and see what's going on if they have a bunch of layers of clothes on. Um, so this is going to give you a safe and easy way to rip clothes off and this is going to give you an easy way to strip and you can use clothes as wound packing. Now you may say that's crazy they're going to get infected. They don't have time to get infected if they're dead. So if someone is genuinely hemorrhaging really badly from one of the joint areas that you can't tourniquet, you need to pack it. It's not possible to everyday carry enough packing that you would potentially need for a severe bleed in that area. It's just not. Um, so the quick clock gauze gives you something that you can start off with and then you can top on top of that, you can take a t-shirt, have someone start cutting strips. Uh, and then that's gonna give you the ability, you can tie a little knot at the end and you can use that little ball, you shove it in the wound and you just start going to town. Um, they'll teach you how to do that and stop the bleed and t C course, but it's gonna be a lot easier to do all that with a knife. That's all I got for you guys today. Um, there's a few tips on EDC medical gear um, from my personal and somewhat professional opinion, what I carry and why I carry it. Uh, I hope the video was useful for you. Um, as always, at the end of my videos, I like to talk a little bit about my faith um, because I wanna steward what I have. And what do I mean by that when I say steward what I have? There's a parable that Jesus tells and he tells it in two different ways. First way he tells it is the parable of the talents. Um, so he speaks to it as a master that's going away for a long time and he has some servants and based on their abilities, 
he gives them a certain amount of talents. Now that would be equivalent to a certain amount of money. Um, not talent as in you can throw a baseball really well. Um, but what that means is to one person he gave 10 based on their ability, one he gave five, another two. Now the interesting thing with this is the master returns after a long time, he comes to the servants. The servant who had 10 invested his 10, gave him another 10. The one who invested five, gained him five more and while he was away. Now one of them was scared of the master and he didn't invest any of the talents and he just buried it in the ground. Now what does this mean and how is this applicable to our lives? Well, we are all given specific gifts, abilities, talents, influence. There's something in your life, even if you don't see it, even if you have a hard time acknowledging it, pray that God would reveal it to you so that you can steward it. There's so many things in our lives, um, even people that we have around us in our lives that we can influence in a positive way, that we can love the way that Jesus loved while he was here, and we can make an infinitely eternal impact, even in the smallest way. So it's not fair to compare yourself to someone who seemingly has 10 talents when you have two, right? And it's not a level of they're better than you or worse, it just simply is. So what that means is you're like, man, I only have this many things in my life. I've got this job, um, I've got this community around me, I'm influencing these people. Pray that, God, I hope that I would steward it the best and I would use my money, I would use my time and my energy to the best of my ability. Um, to lead those people to the Christ and to share with them the gospel and also to love them and serve them the way um, that we would want to be served and that Christ commanded us to serve. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching the video. Get out there. Train hard. Stay safe.